Hello YouTube! My name is Nye, you join me in the Finale Guitar Shop in Sheffield and you're watching my channel Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar tutorials. In today's video I'm going to be doing something that's long overdue. I've been meaning to uh, do a video on this topic for ages um, but I keep putting it off because it's obviously quite a big one. Um, talking about one of the biggest guitarists in Irish music, that is John Doyle. What I'll be doing in this clip is running through uh, a video of John Doyle and Liz Carroll live in Boston. I'm not allowed to show that clip in this video for copyright reasons, but I've put a link in the description box down below and you can go and get that in another tab um, so you'll be able to follow along with the clip and see some examples of the techniques that I'm going to be talking about in this video. The video is going to be broken into three parts. Uh, the first part is going to be a kind of basic guide to the types of chords that John Doyle generally uses in his backing guitar. When he's playing songs and things like that, obviously he plays some more complicated stuff. He does use some really interesting jazzy harmonies, really nice chord voicings. But it tends to be quite simple when he's playing backing guitar, so we'll be looking at how he constructs his chords today. In next week's video, I'm going to be showing you some more in-depth techniques that he uses later on in this clip of him playing with uh, Liz Carroll. And then the following weekend, I'm going to be releasing a video in which I go in-depth on his um, very simple strumming pattern and then how he adds some really nice syncopated accents to that pattern to get some really cool rhythm variations for uh, reels in uh, Irish backing guitar. If you want to watch all three of those videos and get my kind of complete guide to the style of John Doyle, you will need to be hitting the subscribe button, which is just down there. So if you go down just below the video in that corner, you'll find the subscribe button and there's a little bell next to it. Hit that bell and click on all notifications and that way when I post my follow-up videos, you'll get a little notification on your YouTube homepage so you can come back and watch them for free. You can also find them on my website folkfriend.co.uk on the videos page. One more thing as well, if you're scrolling down anyway, hit the little like button please. It really helps my channel out, the YouTube algorithm loves likes. If you like my videos, it will show them to more people and I might actually get a few pennies in ad revenue, which would be fantastic. So please do hit the like button if you enjoy my videos. The first thing to say about John Doyle's style is that he plays in drop D tuning. So if you're in standard, take your bottom string down from an E down to a D. Like that. Now when you're playing in um, drop D tuning, you can use any chord shape whose root note is on the A string. So any chords where you miss out the bottom string, chords like C, um, A, obviously D is absolutely fine because you've got a D note at the bottom. So those kinds of chords where the bottom string is normally omitted, you can play um, in the normal way, still omit the bottom string, unless it's a chord based around D, in which case add the bottom string in and it'll sound like it's got an extra low bass note under it. And if you want to find out more about chord shapes for drop D, I've made a whole video about that, which you can find linked in a little card in the corner. In that video, I've talked a little bit about this shape, which is a generic major chord. In this case, I'm playing a G major. Um, and if you take the index finger down a fret, you get a minor chord. And you can slide that around the neck. Um, sometimes I like to call that tromboning, because you're kind of just sliding uh, one shape around like a trombone. Oh. Um, so, John Doyle kind of does something a bit like that shape, but with a slight variation. Whenever you see John Doyle, he's usually got his thumb hooked around the back like that, and he plays a lot of chords that are based around this kind of very closed hand position shape. And what he's doing is he's playing chords where there are mainly octaves, occasionally some fifths, um, not many thirds, and definitely no notes that are more complicated than that, unless they're open strings. So what I mean by that is normally when you build a chord, if I build a D major chord, for example, I've got a root, a third and a fifth. So that's the first, the third and the fifth notes from a D major scale that go into the chord. One, three, five, like that. If I took that chord and I just played the root and the fifth, I'd get a very kind of, um, a very straight down the middle kind of chord, very definite, but it's not got a third in it, and it's the third note that makes that chord minor or major that gives it its kind of emotional impact. And so these kinds of chords like this, where I've got just roots and fifths, they can be used in place of either minor or major chords, and they have a very kind of traditional, uh, very solid sound. Not much depth to it, but very, very solid and chunky and nice for filling out the bottom end under melody players. 
and you see John Doyle using a lot of those kinds of shapes. So I'm going to have a little look now at some examples which I've taken from a clip of John Doyle playing with the amazing fiddle player Liz Carroll. So straight out the gate on that recording they're playing a set of tunes which begin in the key of C major and in the key of C major your chord one is C, your chord four is going to be F. So for F what John Doyle plays is this. So he's got his ring finger sat on the uh, bottom string third fret. He's got that finger gently muting the A string because you don't want an A in an F chord. And then he's got his little finger um, on another F, so on the third fret of the, the D string. So we've got two nice octaves of the root note at the bottom. That finger kind of mutes the uh, G string. If you want to, you can put the major third into the chord as well by adding your middle finger there. So that's middle finger on the second fret of the G string. But if you want just octaves, you can have just three Fs by adding your index finger on the first fret of the B string and letting your little finger just mute the, uh, the G string there. So that gives you this, which is just pure octaves. And you'll see very often John Doyle just slides this shape around because that's super convenient because it can be either a major or a minor chord. So as long as you slide it to the right root position, um, you know it's going to fit. So he's got C, normal C, then F like that, with just uh, octaves. If you do leave the G in it by mistake, by the way, you get a nice kind of jazzy sounding version of it, but um, that's not what John does. And then for G, if you slide that shape up to, you've got your chord 5. And obviously with that one, if you leave the G string in, it's another G, so that's another octave. So these are just real simple chords that are just octaves. I mean, to call them chords at all, they're not really chords, they're just unison. <laughs> um, that kind of thing. He also uses um, chord 2. So in the key of C major, chord 2 is D minor, should be D minor. But again, he's going to use a chord which hasn't got any thirds in it and consequently is neither minor nor major. And that is this chord. So you've got your little finger on the fifth fret of the A string, and then you've got three Ds at the bottom of the chord. One of them slightly out of tune. Um, three Ds at the bottom of the chord. And then you've got your index finger doing um, an A, which is the fifth on the second fret of the G string. And then your middle finger on the third fret of the B string doing yet another D. So you've got root, 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 fifth, root. And that's a real kind of strident, powerful kind of low D chord. This is a big stretch, and if you struggle with this big stretch, you could always play it without the little finger, because that is almost the same chord. But John Doyle doesn't do it like that, he does it with his little finger, always. So that's what he's playing for the first set of tunes, which are in the key of C. He starts off on C, goes down to his F, goes to his G, sometimes he does goes down to chord 2 which is D neither minor or major instead and that's what you see him doing for the first um, the first bit of the clip there in that same tune which has four parts uh, there is a section which begins on a G chord so he's playing that like this using this shape which is just octaves something like that and then he goes back down to F to see at the end of the section. Something like that. But right at the end of that little section, he does a little slide up just to round it off, like this. And what he's doing there is introducing some thirds. So instead of taking this octave shape, he uh, moves his index finger down a string so that it's now doing a third. So if you take your G shape and you slide it up two frets, then you remove the little finger, move the index finger down a string. Now that is playing um, a minor third related to the root note. If your index finger were a fret higher, it would be a major third. 
But if you think about the fact that this tune is in the key of C major, the chords going up from chord 5G should then be A minor and B diminished. So what he's done is he's played for A minor just a root and a minor third, and for um, B diminished just a root and a minor third, because a diminished chord is uh, a root, a minor third and a flattened fifth. There's no flattened fifth in this, it's just the root and the minor third. So all together we get this nice little slide that goes from that G kind of modal chord with no third in it, up to A minor, up to um, effectively B diminished, and then he's back to back to C because he's run all the way up the chord scale G A B C, and that leads him back into the start of the set. There's one other interesting little thing that you can spot John Doyle doing in this first tune. The second time they go through it, instead of going from C F straight to G, he does a little chromatic slide, so like that. I slowed down, it doesn't sound very good, but like that, it sounds quite nice. So all he's doing there, and you can take this and apply it anywhere else in your playing, he's taking um, two chords which are separated by a tone, aka two frets apart for their root notes, and if he wants to go from one to the other, he just plays the intermediary semitone on the way through by just sliding the whole shape up. You can also do that any other time where you've got two um, chords that are separated by a tone. So if you were going from G up to A minor, for example, you could do it like that. If you were going from D up to um, E minor, you could do something like that. So you can always apply this idea. And another time you could do it would be if you were going from C to your D chord, you could just slide the C up one fret. There's loads of other ways you can introduce chromaticism into your playing, and if you want to find out absolutely loads of them for uh, Irish and Scottish and general Celtic backing guitar, then get hold of a copy of my book. It's called Backing Guitar Techniques for Traditional Celtic Music. You can buy it very cheaply as an ebook with uh, a load of accompanying downloads as well, or you can buy it in paperback on Amazon but check out the little card in the corner for both of those. So that is it for this week's video. I hope you've learned loads of useful stuff from this, and next week is going to be even better. We're going to be going into some more detail on how John Doyle uses these simple shapes, trombones them around the neck, and does some really cool um, things with a few extra little shapes thrown in as well. If you want to get that video straight to your inbox, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button while you're there. It really helps me out. Check out my books and all my other videos on folkfriend.co.uk. Loads of other good stuff on there, free downloads and so on. Go check it out. That's it from me for this week then. I will look forward to seeing you all next weekend at half twelve on Saturday.